What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast. Now, I'm Alex. In this video, I'm going to be previewing Need for Speed Heat. Now, Need for Speed Heat releases on the PS4, Xbox One, and on PC on November 8th, 2019. So, this is the 24th entry in the Need for Speed franchise, and it's also the 25th anniversary of Need for Speed. And that's about the only new information I can really give you about the game. Here, here's the deal with this game. I'm, and I'll be flat out honest. And these previews, by the way, I like to say this kind of in the beginning of every video, these previews aren't necessarily necessarily me taking like a deep dive into the game it's me more like talking about my impressions of what I see from the game leading into its release so if you expect like a deep dive into the game it's just not the kind of previews we do on the channel and that's totally cool if you guys are not into our kind of previews but here's the deal with Need for Speed Heat and Need for Speed in general I haven't necessarily been the biggest Need for Speed fan I have gotten Need for Speed games in the past I have gotten car racer games but more in like the action genre like like Need for Speed games like MotorStorm, even like Driver San Francisco. Remember that game? Um, th and there's there's been plenty of them. I'm not necessarily into the more realistic uh, ones, but I, I do like these kind of games. But what I'm seeing from Need for Speed Heat, and I was even just scrolling through. I typed in Need for Speed Heat, okay, on Google, and I was even just looking through the uh, the article titles, okay, and even they were saying like it just looks uninspiring, and that's kind of what I got from it too. Does it look nice, like visually? Yeah, it looks great. The game looks phenomenal. I thought I've honestly thought uh, the last several Need for Speed games have looked visually very, very good. There's nothing wrong with how the game looks. There's nothing wrong with I believe probably how the game feels. I think the game uh, functions and the gameplay functions fine. Uh, you're just in the car this time. Remember a couple games ago, you actually could take your character outside of the car. That was a weird twist, but there just doesn't seem, like this game seems kind of empty and hollow. It doesn't seem like there's a lot. I could be completely wrong, and if I'm wrong, and or you guys know something that I don't know, leave in the comments below, please, but to me, like watching the game, it just kind of feels empty. There's the day and night cycle, but it's not a cycle anymore. You can choose between, you know, playing during the day and all the different varieties of things you could do during the day, which is pretty much just racing, and then things you could do at night, which is pretty much just racing. And that's honestly what I find to be the problem with this game is it just seems very, very repetitive, and like you're doing the exact same thing over and over and over. Now, yeah, you can play with friends. You can play in a lobby. They'll put you with people. You unlock cars. You unlock parts, things like that. That's all in it, but like it just seems generic, and, and I don't know, maybe the last several games have felt that way, but I just feel like what's happened over the last couple of years for Need, with Need for Speed, uh, it's got like a bad taste in people's mouths just in the very beginning, before we even get into this game. We're coming off of the last game that shoved microtransactions down your throat. Now, even in the official gameplay trailer that's got six and a half million views, they basically admit what they did was wrong and that it's not going to be that way anymore. Like unlocking things, uh, you know, opening packs, stuff like that, and how you unlock things or how you gain money or reputation, as they call it, in this game. Like it's different. So they, they literally admit it in a six and a half million viewed video that they're changing things around. Now that's great. That's fantastic. That, that that's okay um, but at the same time you still have the people that were fooled the last several times you still have in my opinion what seems to kind of be like the same like yeah it looks better and it's taking place in a different a different city different fictional city but like it just doesn't I feel like why like for the people that are going to get this game if you guys have made it this far and you're going to get this game that's awesome why are you getting the game and that's that's not a insult and 100 not an insult i truly want to know why are people getting the game it could just be because it's a it's this kind of racing action genre and you know i buy every nhl game so i'm i'm addicted to just getting every year's sport game that's in the nhl front maybe you guys like racing games and you'll just get any racing game that comes out in that genre and if that's the reason that's totally cool i just i think from an outsider perspective one that's not into the racing genre i don't get it i don't get what makes this special and, and why someone would would and, and that's not to say this game is going to be bad but another thing i fear i truly do fear is yes there's no microtransaction loot boxes, stuff like that in the beginning. But if we've seen around the gaming industry and we remember to crash team racing, now that's Activision. It's not EA. But 
you know, EA, who, who, who's to say they're not going to take some great ideas from other publishers, right? If you remember Crash Team Racing, the, uh, the store where you could buy everything, right, uh, where you could unlock characters, you could unlock, uh, unlock skins and cars and all these different things, um, it looked like you would eventually have to pay real-world money uh, for it when it, for, when it first came out, but it actually wasn't. You could just, it, it was just unlockable, right? A couple, like a month later, once everybody had already settled on the game was phenomenal, like the game's really, really good, go get this game. Once everybody had said that, then they rolled in microtransactions where they they curbed and they destroyed the amount of money you earn in each race. They, they slashed it by more than 50%. Um, and then they made it so that you could use real world money to buy the stuff in game. So my point there is nowadays, I think what people are going to start doing and what we'll see EA, Ubisoft, Activision, all these people do is, yeah, they may say there's nothing in the beginning because you need to make a good impression, especially this Need for Speed game is the biggest issue. And I didn't even hear a lot of like the positives of the last Need for Speed game, but you totally hear the negatives. You hear the negatives, and the negatives were those microtrans, were those loot boxes, basically. So I think what we're going to start seeing over the next couple of years is, yeah, the first you know three four weeks that the game is out there won't be anything it'll allow people to say well wow this is a good game go get this game everybody gets the game then they roll out micro now i'm not saying that's going to happen but i think you're going to see it more and more in games and is need for speed a candidate for that yes 100 percent, it's a candidate and, and like i said you know being an outsider i don't really know what the strengths were from the last game but i'll tell you again from being on the internet, from knowing what I know about games, and just hearing as much as I possibly can here, I love I love so many different genres of games. I try to listen to what people say about all these different genres of games, and I didn't hear that many positive things about the Need for Speed game, about the last Need for Speed game. So yeah, while this game looks visually good, the gameplay looks very very solid. Everything looks everything looks good. I'll say just good. At the same time, it kind of looks empty, and, and not empty in terms of, like, yeah, things are going on. Things are going on. It's a populated city, all this stuff, but, like, it just seems like there's not much to do in it. And maybe that's just what these games have always been and will always be, but, like, it, it's just a hard sell for somebody like me. Again, if you're into these kind of games, that's awesome. Not everybody's into NHL, so people will tell me NHL is, the, like, the worst sport or the worst game of that. Like, you know, there, there's a lot of things that are said about game. Like, you don't have to agree with me. We don't have to attack each other. I just want to know what's the reasoning for getting this game. It's a, it's a sincere and honest question. I hope you guys will answer it in the comments below. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Are you guys going to be getting this game? I mean, the day it comes out is the day Death Stranding comes out. The week after is the day Pokemon um, and Star Wars Jedi Fall in Order. The week after that's Doom. So there's a lot of games coming out all at once. Are you guys going to be getting Need for Speed over that, those games? And why, if you are, let me know. Make sure you guys subscribe to our YouTube channel podcast now. Hit that bell icon so you guys know when these videos go up. And thank you, as always, for watching this video. I hope to see you all on the next game preview.